Yeah, I don't. <laughs> I can't. I do, you do what you can with what you got, man. I was just, your, your background looks fairly clean. You know, I have a whole mess back here, so. Oh yeah. All right. Um. Oh yeah. I always forget because there's like the regular introductions and stuff. Whew, if I'm ready and you are ready, thumbs up. Good to go. I'll do a good intro here. And... Yo, la, hello, and welcome everyone to whatever episode number of uh, Talking Tremors we're on right now. Honestly, I lost count. Like, the last one was 13, and I'm just kind of, whoa. Uh, I'm your host, Levi Dylan Burns Lafla, and I've got a special guest with me. This is Jeff Johnson of the Suns and Shadows podcast. Say hello, Jeff. Hello, Jeff. <laughs> uh, I've been listening to that podcast with... Uh, him and Kevin Smith. I was actually listening to your Evil Dead episodes uh, today. Uh, I got through the first one and then halfway through the second one. I actually had some questions from it that I was like, oh, I need to... You know, when you're talking through a podcast, you listen, oh, what's that person say? Oh, they didn't quite finish that all the way there. I always got to know. Sure. Actually, actually, I always like to start off with something big and provocative. What, you know, what's that Sofia Coppola incest thing? <laughs> I don't know if that was from our Kevin Smith. <laughs> So I'm not sure about that one. Uh, that was still a few months ago, but you'd have to ask. Him about I w- that. So if you get him on for an episode, he'll, he can get into that for you. All right, I'll star it for later. It was just I just just had to ask. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, are you gonna cut that in post? I'm like, no, no, no. no. That, that's kind of the point. That's kind of the point. Cause like this Trevor TV show is so fucked up or whatever that I like to just like do what I can to make it fun. Uh, and yeah, so if you're listening, we're gonna press play on the episode Night of the Shriekers. Uh, we're going to talk along, do a commentary towards it, to it, and uh, then talk about it later on. So, uh, unless Jeff has anything to say. Let's hit it. All right. Uh, in three, two, one. So, Jeff, why did you want to pick this episode? I don't know. I was always a big fan of the, the second Tremors movie. I mean, I, I obviously love the first one, but the second one is the one that I really, I don't know, that's where I really got hooked on it. And they gave Fred Ward the, the chance to carry the, the franchise at that point, at least for that movie. I have a huge affinity for two. Uh, two, if you've listened to this podcast, two is the one that I got hooked on because of Shriekers. That's why I, I love them, too. There's something... I love Tremors 2 Aftershocks. And yeah, seeing Fred Ward be like the hero that he is, I need to watch Remo Williams because if he's that good of an act, you know, to watch the transformation from one to two and then be like, oh, what's this Remo Williams everyone keeps talking about? I need some more Fred Ward in my life. <laughs> uh, See, and I've never seen that show or the movie. Oh, neither have I. That's where it's like, but everybody talks, like, like, if someone loves Fred Ward, that is always the, it's Tremors and Remo Williams. And I'm just so like, I need to, okay, got to check this out. Sorry, we got distracted. We're not talking about the episode. <laughs> That's kind of what makes it fun, though. I mean, because uh, really, there's no dialogue at the beginning of this. That's a podcast. That's what podcasts do. Uh, <laughs> there's something cool uh, that Kevin pointed out when I was doing the podcast with him, that this survivalist, Bert, when he's out here doing this whole, like, search and rescue, just looking at shit. When people talk about, oh, I'm going to go be Burt Gummer and have a gun wall. Guys, that's not that's not being Burt Gummer. You're out there alone with a single gun, foraging, scrapping for things. Like, he's climbing down a canyon here. Like, And now I'm thinking of it like, bravo, Michael Gross. Just like, yeah, I'm into it. Like, we're going to do this. Uh, if you're going to... That's the real survivalist uh, libertarian mentality. You know, it's not all the guns possible. It's one man out there doing it alone. I always admire that. And it's, yeah, it's just cool to see Michael Gross out here in a singular shot. <laughs> All right. Even as I say, this is just him acting. They do a couple of uh, a couple of these throughout the series. And it's just Michael Gross. They just took him out there with a camera. Yeah, is this the infamous episode that was uh, done out of order and they messed around with that? Oh, yeah. Or are we going to talk about that like, later? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, this I, is... I, I'm trying to remember because I know when we covered this, I it was fresh in my mind. We're watching other shows right now, so it's kind of like trying to keep some information straight. 
they, they put it as the second Shrieker episode. No, 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 sorry. The second episode. So it's the only episode in all the order that is right is Feeding Frenzy, is the very first episode. And then all the other ones are wrong. But they played this one second. And so you really, like, this, talk about a whole flow of messed up continuity because the characters are interacting later in a way that you're like, okay, you, we just, like, got to know you. This is kind of messed up. Uh, but yeah, this one, wildly out of, I watched this when it first aired, too. Oh, yeah, I said that. You read my tweet out on, on your podcast. But it's, even then, you're still like this. I can tell something's wrong. Even at the age of 12, you're like, this is messed up, man. <laughs> and that's why I don't mind going on tangents because I get so freaking pissed about how that got ep- all, all out of order so anyway um, government shriekers the whole idea of this episode what do you think good idea bad idea I actually didn't mind it too bad because it's something that they did lay a foundation for throughout the, the franchises um, especially in Part um, part three went back to perfection, where it seemed like something else was kind of going on in Perfection Valley with the the Department of Field and Natural Resources, <laughs> whoever that was. I'm trying to remember that, but they did set that up. Like, hey, we're we're here to protect the indigenous light life. Well, at that point, somebody's going to be researching them. Somebody's going to be doing science experiments. Somebody's going to have better ideas on or worse ideas on how to handle things. It's uh, I I'm with you. It's a smart. It's you gotta you eventually have to research it. It's like if dinosaurs were to exist, or you know Godzilla were to exist. You're like, well, I mean, as scary and dangerous as this is, somebody has to like figure out how to actually interact and deal with these creatures in a way that's halfway helpful. Right. I mean, they eventually get into that with like El Blanco with the the what I call the riot episode. <laughs> You know, with the Shriekers, it finally dipped into a little bit of, like, what the government might be doing that is not exactly okay. Yeah. Uh, I, guess I halfway agree with the, the protesters in that one, but it's still like, I don't know, man. It's an animal, and it, I, I think we treat it better. I think they the town treats it better than they even realize. They do a great job in that riot episode. Like, oh, no, El Blanco, like... Like, he takes care of us, and I'm pretty sure... Like, we no, we take care of him, and I'm pretty sure he takes care of us, too. And you're oh, like, right. yeah, like... Uh, that's actually one of my questions, because when later on they go like El Blanco goes under the store here, like is this town crazy for like living here? I mean, I know they all have their reasons and stuff, but is it absolutely crazy to live in a place where there's a monster that could eat you at any point in time? Yeah, to a point, it's almost like the people that live like near a volcano. It could go off at any time. You you feel the tremors, you feel the aftershocks of that a little bit. <laughs> And, you know, I know I'm probably going to date myself, but I've seen other other TV shows that are basically this central concept of, oh, I know this is a dangerous area, but we've been dealing with this for years, so we're very okay with this. Uh, it, ru- it reminds me of uh, living in Montana or Wyoming or something like that, or anywhere with an outback, or Australia. And, oh, yeah, there's bears and cougars and... The odd occasional giant snake, but, you know, you deal with it, you live with it. Right. Or you live with the raging monster, you know. <laughs> That's where, you know, as much, I'm, I'm like Larry in that sense. I'd love to go there, but then I take the realistic, like, um, I mean, do I want to take the get eaten chance, though? And, That's very true. On, and on that note, would you move to perfection? I would. I wouldn't be. I mean, if it was just like El Blanco specifically, that I would be okay with something like that because you know you just set up the defenses, you set up the perimeter, you have the the GPS watch that does like nine hundred different things. <laughs> I mean, as long as you got, as long as you're prepared for it, you know what the, you know what the potential destruction could be or, or uh, you know what could possibly happen to you. As long as you're prepared for it, it really shouldn't be an issue. Like they, and on that, you're prepared for everybody literally going to grab something. Yep. It's all shaking and crazy, but eh, I don't know. They deal with it. I. That's always so comical throughout this whole show is when they do stuff like that. 
I was actually going to point that out because I talked about it in the first episode when we did this, to, where they literally st- stop a sentence, El Blanco goes through, and then they restart a sentence because they're just so used to that. And it's not even that ridiculous. I don't know. I think I've seen enough regular, not with a giant monster, but you see enough things where you're like, oh no, shit's happening. Ah, stop yeah. it. Okay, we're good. And then you continue the conversation. Another, actually, on the, this, on that feeling, I keep jumping really well with this, uh, this feels like such a small town, like, right here. Like, this, like, yes. they're just, this little bit of meeting at, uh, Tremors 3 does it great, too, where they have that meeting at night or whatever, and everyone is verbally sparring and stuff a little bit. Like, they're talking about what's happening, but I love what Nancy does here, where Bert just can't fucking shut up about the Shriekers being bad, and she's kind of, Bert, just, Cut it out. Leave it alone. Like, Bert, just please, for the love of God, we're trying to, like, move on here and try to do something. Like, please. <laughs> Entertain life-saving shriekers. I'd love... I, I Yeah, because I'd love to see it... Uh, actually, because to, to have a monster that can actually reproduce... If you could control that and research it right, man, that's got a lot of applications for shit. Like, that's a... Oh, no, seriously, yeah. <laughs> uh, b- instant food sources. Uh, hell, you could probably get some cloning or some, like, immort- like immortality. Or not even that, but just, like, fix some stem shell shit. Not, oh, man, now I'm really thinking. <laughs> There's so much you could do, really. Like, because that's... It's really freaking... I was watching Tremors 2 and... Uh, when Kate's like, they took a whole different evolutionary path, and just like, oh yeah, I mean, really, holy fucking shit, <laughs> like, they, like they can just spread and swarm. Actually, that spreading and swarming, uh, I love Tremors too. It's an amazing movie. The thing that I feel gets let down is it doesn't have that like they're all coming at you, and oh no, what do you do? I mean, there's a lot of like tense moments where one of them is there and scares you. But the swarm of it, actually, uh, if you read S.S. Wilson's short stories and stuff, that's one thing he loves. Actually, he wrote one, uh, Grogan Duke's, uh, ah, Grogan Duke's Giant Monster. Uh, and it's about a, a creature that swarms because he's fascinated with it. And <laughs> you don't get that with Tremors too. This one does a great job with it. Where they're, like, later on when it's just boom, 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 they're just coming, man. And you can't stop them because there's, no. they made 40 of them by the time they got there. And then actually, and then another thing that you, if you read the Tremors 2 script, you have to actually read that original script with Reba and Kevin. They eat their dead. So like when you're killing Shriekers, they will drag off the others, like, like the dead ones' corpses and eat them so they can keep multiplying. Right. Oh my God, it's it's just horrifying. That sounds like a zombie thing. Yeah, man, that's, ugh. That's where uh, <laughs> that's where I love this one. Really, is like that. We get some horror back out of out of Tremors again. We we drift oh, the needle. That's what I thought about this episode. Yeah. Uh, drift that, which the comedy is good. actually. There's a bunch of great comedy in this, but then oh no, this is like legitimately scary. And not even because it's at night too. It's just the shriekers. Just that number of shriek. Just. Well done, puppets. I'm sorry, I'm almost fought. Yo, oh, yeah, I'm almost fawning over this episode. I watched it five times today in preparation for this, and I could watch it another three more times. Like this is just so freaking. Ugh. Oh, it's very good. It very much carries the tone of the movies. Yeah, that's what I was very pleased with when I watched this. It's got the. If you're homaging something, it's got a Jurassic Park feel. Like, you know, Tremors 5. Tremors 5 really fucks up by just, like, straight-up ripping images. You can homage it. Like, I'm looking at these cages a little bit with this rain coming down. It's very uh, uh, Lost World, Jurassic Park 2, Lost World, like, with all the... Or even the first one, too, with all the with the T-Rex in the rain. Uh, which you get, too, because those puppets are very, you know, dinosaur-like, pre-Cambrian. Yeah. But they're pre-Cambrian life force. <laughs> Which I've only come to find out recently is wrong. Yeah. Like, it has to, like, there's only single celled life forms at that time. It needs to be, like, the Devonian era. Caitlin got me a, a 
a picture off Etsy that had it, and I had to oh, look it up. Okay. Science, man. <laughs> <laughs> Can't deny it. Yeah, I don't blame Kate. You know, like, hey, she didn't have the tools. Oh, backup generator. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the backup generator. It's the I, if we're gonna use the podcast to like endorse something, everybody should have a backup generator. I don't. Yeah, absolutely. But we should all have a backup backup generator. <laughs> backup backup generator. <laughs> well, I'm moving to Arizona. This is- that's something we're going to be getting at our new property once we get it every oh, nice. year we can order. <laughs> Talk to Steve. He probably knows that he'll set you up exactly with the right model and everything. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Most of Bert's characteristics, like I see his YouTube page, and he's got, he has yeah. got he lives out in Prescott, and he does all these weird things, and I'm just like, okay, that's Bert. All right, that's Bert. There's yeah, some Bert, Bert there. That's Bert. <laughs> Well, you could definitely see how, you know, a lot of those characteristics got over to, to Bert, so. Oh, yeah. If you look at the original uh, storyboards for the first movie, the character as it's drawn for Bert looks like Steve. Like, with the glasses and everything. Okay. Yeah. Like, there's no mustache. Yeah. Like, it's it's a pic- it's drawings of Steve. Like, I, I remember seeing it because they have the the wrong rec room or whatever, and it's very clearly Steve Wilson holding a rifle, like, shooting the grab one. So, yeah, that... Good ideas. That cinches it. Oh, I gotta point this out, too. Twitchell's wearing a fanny pack. Like, in my watching this so much... It's like so, like, 80s, 90s with the fanny packs. I had to point it out to Kim. I love fanny packs. I don't know, man. They're useful. Like, I, 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 I like. People still use them. They're not exactly dead. I actually have one. That I use so much that I broke it. <laughs> it's, uh, I had a couple back like years ago, and the last one I had, I was like, well, I'm, I'm not buying another one because I spent like thirty dollars on it. Oof. It was a nice, one of those old nice leather ones, you know. It yeah. Was really cool. Like a Twitchel. <laughs> yeah, like a Twitchel. A Twitchel pack. That's yeah. what it should be called for, <laughs> for the store. I imagine he like he made that, and it was probably one of those like, oh man, I, I hate Gummer, but like he's always saying I need a like a first aid kit or survival pack, you know, when I'm out hiking. I should put one together just cause I'm never gonna tell him that I did it because of him, but damn it, Gummer, it's a good idea. <laughs> Dean Norris as Twitchell. Uh, I actually love Twitchell as a character. Like, it's really, uh, you could do that whole government man angle, and he can be like more of like a dick, kind of like standoffish and stuff. But there's a great charm that Dean Norris brings to it, where even in the first episode, where you hate him at first, by the end, when he's screaming, "Cover, cover, cover, kill it, kill it, block it," you're like, "No, don't eat Twitchell. No, please don't." Like, it's right. Even in actually, I this. I asked because you know I I was a fan of like Breaking Bad, and so watching this then again after watching Breaking Bad is like, wow! I have to get used to him being slightly comedic. <laughs> so it was kind of because uh, it's sim- swallow. Because like, it's similar. Man, he goes from this badass to like, oh, but technically he did this first before that. So I was talking to Glenn Maddock, and I was like, we were both wondering, did Vince Gilligan? Watch Tremors the series at some point in time, and he might have. You know, like it's it's a desert landscape. You know, all that jazz and stuff. I don't know. I like to live in that world. Um, did the Double Dragon movie? Ben Skilligan, he wrote that. Yeah, his writing partner. Let's hope so. If Vince Gilligan, if you're listening, make sure you you let us know. Oh, and I want me a space blanket. I don't need it for anything. There's no predators or shit. Hide from the heat. <laughs> but you need, I don't know. Maybe there is. Maybe the, the graboid eggs hadn't, haven't hatched yet, so I don't want to take that chance. <laughs> no, and why, why should you? You really shouldn't. <laughs> and I do love the way that everybody uses it, just that this, that great image. Of, yeah. Uh, are we safe? Yeah. It's okay. I feel like there's still... They also have, like, full face covering, <laughs> a little more going 
I was just think, I feel like you can still maybe see a little bit of their heat. I don't know how I much. That a shrieker if they saw it at a distance, they'd be like, "What's that? I'm going." After. It's heat. It's enough heat in the first place to work. They needed fire extinguishers. They should have had a large supply at the store. Actually, this is something I found uh, that apparently doesn't work. That's actually the point of in Tremors Three. Uh, that guy dies. Like they're like legit referencing how fans wrote in and were like, "Oh no." That doesn't work. Like it's like you would still see the heat underneath. So it's like okay, fuck it. <laughs> we'll just do this then. That's why I love these guys. Those things that I thought would be funny, like in the store, if they had like the little prop fire extinguisher. <laughs> and they did that in the show, and then during this episode, like some random like you know, tourist grabs one and it tries to set it off, and they're like, "It doesn't work." <laughs> and then they explain, "Yeah, it doesn't really work like that." <laughs> Put it in the new TV show. Oh, that's good, man. <laughs> that would be perfect. Oh, no. Pooch. <laughs> they actually do, and you, on the subject of props, if you look around in that store, there's a lot of great little, like, I always am trying to read the signage behind uh, the bar because there's Shrieker dog, there's Shrieker dogs I've seen and Shriekers on a shingle, which yeah. I need to find out what that last one is. Because it sounds like shit on a shingle. Kind of. Is that supposed to be like the restaurant item? Like, because I've heard of like that as like a, a food item. That's what I mean. I think the shingle. like there's the SH. Like, I don't know what they're trying to tell us. <laughs> Something on a shingle. Yeah. Or as my wonderful co-host once pointed out, the crab boys on the counter looked a little phallic. <laughs> they are. That Facebook post, I saw that with the dicks. That was legit dickage. <laughs> Ooh, I, ah. Uh, this is my favorite part of this episode. I love the shriekers and everything. You blow up your own house, for God's sake! Like, oh, man. And at, at the rest of the episode, you can feel, like, halfway spirals around that, where it's like, the thing with the door. Bert, your paranoia, like, just trapped these other people in here. Like, I, do you not get this? Like, That seems to be a common theme through everything, too. Is like, you think his paranoia is like, oh, wait, he's on to something. And then all of a sudden, nope. <laughs> it I, really wasn't. Uh, is, do you think Bert is right, wrong, or just lucky? A little bit of all of them. Like, I was really trying to answer that myself, too, and I that I couldn't come up with a better thing than that, because... And it's, I would say, oh, that's, like, bad writing. They didn't do it right. I really feel like that's the point. Like, there's a, there's, okay. a re, there's a real-world application of the idea here where it's like, yeah, you can be prepared and all that, and also you can be way too over-prepared and stuff, but then there is still the simple fact of, like, there are giant, there's monsters that are, like, reproducing and coming at you. You're not going to be able to prepare for it. You're just... Exactly. You're fucked. It's always... Actually, they, I love reading Stampede. That's always the, oh, we did that, and, okay, you're prepared for it, but then you're not. You're not, you're not prepared for that next thing. Like, always that one step up. Ooh, and that guy gets dragged away. Like, that's a like, oh, legitimate... That was great. That legitimate practical effect, too, or whatever. Love that. I always love imagining... I was I was doing this in the Glenn episode where it's just like... It's just a dude, you know, with a puppet, you know, physically just yeah. run, you know, grab somebody and pulling them up and shit. Just like... He just happened to have it just out of frame. It's perfect. Oh, exactly. There is a good way to do that and a bad way to do it. That's oh, yeah. a good way. Tremors is all about the good way. <laughs> oh, yeah. At least when it's practical. The CGI, we actually did, like I said, this is some great CGI, but the practical is always a plus. And every yeah, The CGI is always, during the show, is just, oh, man, yeah. it's hard to... But it's that early, mid-2000s CGI that was bad in everything. Yeah. Plus, you had ILM doing your special effects. Yep. There is the, the, it's just sci-fi channel original movie CGI. That's always what I think of it. It's all the. Or Asylum CGI. Yeah. We don't it's like it. Them, <laughs> we don't like it, companies. Do you not get it? Like, you can use better CGI and effects, please. Ugh. If you want to do cheap CGI, you, you go some, you, 
you outsource it to a place that does really good. Like, you know, if you've seen the show, like, Squid Games or whatever on Netflix, the Korean sci-fi shows, that's an expensive CGI, and it looks a million times better. Really? I actually haven't seen the Squid Game yet, so now I have to, now I will be looking for that. It's a different sort of show. Yeah? All right. <laughs> I'm, I'm aware of Squid Game. I just haven't seen okay. it. Okay. <laughs> Oh, this shot, every time it does this shot of them with the, you know, I don't want to take anyone's guns. I love guns myself or whatever. It's not about an argument about that. It's just fucking awesome. <laughs> just, just like so cool. Like, yes, man. Let's blow stuff up. It's just, I don't, and this is where everybody, like we can have guns and stuff and be cool with them because it's just fun to blow shit up sometimes, man. Like. We've all done it. I live in the middle of the nowhere. You ever made a works bomb? And speaking of, you know what? You can make a bomb on television. <laughs> I love oh, this. Yeah, you can. <laughs> all you had to do was watch one episode of MacGyver and you know how to do it. <laughs> I remember that because I remember an episode of Mythbusters where they're like, oh, we can't show us making a bomb on television. And I was like, uh, did you not watch that episode of Tremors the series? Because... I got a pretty right. good. <laughs> I got a pretty good idea. <laughs> See, that's where like shows like MythBusters always kind of got me. Is like, you say you can't do something yet, if you use it in the application of this was in a movie, let's see if we can replicate it. You can easily point out, no, you can't actually do this. Yeah. <laughs> or there is a way to do this, but we can't show that to you. But this is how they did it in the show, and it doesn't work like that. Yeah, this is how they were wrong. No, you can't actually put this and that You're together. To bust it. Yeah. That would be even cooler. Right. <laughs> oh, oh, this is one from your um your podcast. I love saying that. Everybody should listen to Suns and Shadows. You guys are really fun. I like listening to you. Thank you. Uh, um We got ourselves a superhero lair right here, I think. I think Bert Spunker is the modern day superhero lair. It's the Burt Cave. You know, I was as when I was talking to Kevin Collins and just pointing out like that's Bert's like Batman area where he's just sitting in there looking at computers and seismometers and geophones and always checking up on shit. What I was saying at the beginning where he's going out and doing stuff. That's a, that's a superhero there, man. Like that is legit. It is. I like the like the sections of the bunker too. It's not like yeah. this. I remember from like the first movie and the second movie where it's the house and then you know the bunk the the lower half the basement is where everything is. Well, after everything gets blown up in part three and he gets a chance to redo the whole floor and remap the place, he he really set it up for <laughs> for for the best application possible. Oh yeah. I love uh if you look in the very first movie when he does the broken in the wrong goddamn rec room uh Yep. You can see the door to his shooting range right back there. Right. So it's like that was our, like they had it planned or whatever, but then you actually get to build it and like play it out and explore it. Oh yeah, no, Bert has a has a secret panic room <laughs> over Like every time I think of that, did you, you already have the bunker, okay? So yeah. that's, that's your panic room one, <laughs> and then you have a panic room inside of that panic room. Oh, Bert. <laughs> it's the panic room, panic room. It's like the backup generator. <laughs> that, the backup generator. It's, it's within character. I, it's not a bad thing. <laughs> it's just more like, oh. Dude, have you ever... He needs therapy. He needs counseling from Tremor. <laughs> he's, he's handling a lot of repressed emotion. He needs counseling. Uh, overall, I think Bert is, a, is an excellent character. My kind of point of contention with the series overall was more of like Nancy's constant, like beating them up over it. It's like, you've been living with the guy for, what, 20, 30 years? And you haven't figured him out yet? Like, <laughs> apparently you talk every day, every week. So this is where, I, when I was younger, that turned me off, but then I found out that the, oh, they were leading towards the romantic subplot uh, idea of where Nancy and Bert were going to be online dating. And then oh, I sit, I remember hearing that. And I sit back here and I'm just like, okay, is this... You trying to test whether or not you want to be drinking this cup of tea, and like you're like, I don't necessarily agree with it. I just see that then character angle then too of like, oh, you two are here lonely. Like they're 
as far as I see it, since they're the only ones from the first movie, like the mom and dad are perfection, clearly looking yeah. at each other and being like, oh, hey, I mean, are you into this? Actually, that's the in the Ass Blaster episode where they legit have a, oh, I mean, I shouldn't have sold that Ass Blaster. Oh, it's not your fault. You are just trying to put your daughter through college. And then they hug and Nancy walks away and Tyler just looks at Bert and, you got a problem with that? No, I'm just, I'm just looking, man. Like, it's <laughs> so th- I, then, like looking at it, I see a lot of like her that that nagging. That's why I said I love her. You blew up your own house for God's sake. Feels really like that's the only person out of all these people that could say that. Like the one, oh, I agree. the one that you would allow it to be like, okay, you've been along and around long enough to do it. And. And I defend it too because I can, like I said, you can see where they were going with it, and it's like if they had had the the not even the second season because it's the last half of the season. That's really what it is, and just like if they had had that, oh yeah, that's where that's going, or maybe not. Steve and Brent, if you're listening, like tell me we're fucking wrong. <laughs> yep, they were way off the beaten path on that one. <laughs> They're list- which is funny. Like the other things, Vince Gilligan listening to this podcast seems weird. Like, no, those two are might actually be listening if, if we're wrong, guys. Like, please tell us. Just make sure you retweet the post. Retweeting saves lives, people. I don't do much on Twitter, like with my regular account, but that's retweeting saves lives. On oh, here, oh. This, ugh. ah, yeah, okay, this whole thing in here where they're actually, like, condorned off might be my favorite part of the episode. Like, I know the shriekers and stuff or whatever, but this, everybody's dying or whatever, and they're stuck. <laughs> like, it's, this is some good character shit, man. Like, this is where everyone thinks it's a monster, and this. I love, like, what draws me into this episode is the Shriekers, but then what gets me to stay is all of this crazy character shit happening in the background. And <laughs> this when they break down Twitchell later, like, so your paragon of normalcy is, like, living a 9-to-5 job? And, no, you know, I'm just trying to just feed my wife and kids, and then I can go to Big Sur with my, my 12-string guitar. You know, like, yeah. who is this man? May we get right. may we get more of him? <laughs> it makes you wonder if at some point they were gonna do like some sort of like if they got more episodes or another season, have Twitchell actually play the guitar or, you know, do the magic of T V and yeah. like he's playing the Ooh. guitar and very well. When I do my fanfic, that's always like I love if I can put Twitchell in the background with that, like that would be oh, that would be the best, man. See, that kind of dips into, like, a uh, fan fiction crossover idea I had with, like, the Phantasm movies. Ooh! Reggie Wow, well, oh, yeah! You know, just drive into town in a hemi Cuda. You don't have to say his name. He just sits there. He's like, hey, you play guitar? I can play guitar. And he just plays guitar, and then he just gets in the car and takes off again. <sighs> I haven't watched any of Phantasm, but every time I see somebody, like, say, like, oh, yeah, Reggie and Bert, it's like, oh, man. Okay, bring this in. Okay, let's mix these universes a little. Well, Bert would probably take a look at his quad barrel shotgun and be like, ooh, <laughs> that's an idea. <laughs> what have you seen? <laughs> exactly. There's a, ooh, uh, I did a really good Evil Dead one. Uh, I think Ash, you know, talking about Ash in this series yeah. is just like, and that, I did it because I saw so many people be like, oh, Ash and, like, Tremors. And I'm just like, god damn it. Like, I love it. Like, let's let's fucking try. Holy shit. Okay. This is like spaghetti and lamb chops. Like, bring this together here. <laughs> uh, and actually, that's a good question for you to listen to Sons and Shadows podcast about Ash vs. Evil Dead. What kind of similarities do you see between Ash vs. Evil Dead and this? Um comedy aspect um you also get a lot of the great character development between the the main characters not the re- not so much the recurring characters but like the core group of who you see like tyler bert um nancy all like the perfection citizens the perfectionites yeah and so you, you get a lot of excellent 
good moments there. Like with Ash versus Evil Dead, you're introduced to two new people that are now joining Ash for the very first time. He's always been on his own or leading like, you know, an army of darkness, the people that don't know any better. And so you actually have two people who are willingly helping him and it's like a team dynamic and it's very different. You get that out of Tremors too because now Bert's now the team captain and he's got a team that he's got to work with. <laughs> You were just making that comparison, and I'm like, oh, well, oh, it's Pablo and uh, uh, Vanessa. Or, yeah. Kelly. Kelly, thank you. Uh, like, holy shit, that's totally Tyler and Rosalito over here. Like, this is like, that's and then, insane. like, Bert is definitively the Ash character in that center, and you're like, oh, man, yeah. Uh, and I, I brought that up, too, because I was really thinking about just, like, in terms of, like, taking what we know from the movies and everything and then making a TV show about it, if you have to change up the concept. It's not, you know, they're two fundamentally different formats. So, you know, what do you do inside of that? And just like, oh, yeah, like, these really, this, I love Ash vs. Evil Dead and Tremors for, like, shaking up the lore while also, like, oh, that's where that, okay, that's where that would have gone, you know, if you had just, you know, just kept that wheel rolling or whatever. What I hate about Tremors 5 through 7 is it's like, that wheel goes off track. You're like, that, that doesn't seem like that's where that was going at all. So you got to like get used to it. But with this, you're just like, Oh, okay. Okay. You set up, like you said, you set up those ideas with tremors three and you just kind of keep that wheel rolling and making right. this. And yeah, you can go off in like some different directions. You can incorporate more into the concept without taking it away. You still have your callbacks to the other movies. So it's not like, you're completely ignoring everything. You can just sprinkle it in here and there, little bits and pieces. Yeah. Uh, I really keep thinking of these those scientists. You made a good point with you have to research it. And by the time that if you're watching and, you know, along with us and you haven't seen this episode, I feel really bad about what's this. By Like, oh, no. Yeah. This didn't work because you didn't think about every single thing like Bert was telling you. You could like, he's now I think about it, he's being the Ian Malcolm of like guy like they're shriekers. Life's gonna find a way. You're still not gonna, and I feel like, uh, you know, and even Bert, you know, watching it right there where he's just like, man, you know, I may have said I told you so, but that's still it doesn't doesn't get any easier to watch somebody die because of their own idiocy. And I feel I could do. I feel bad for her every time. I, I always hate her up until that point, but by, like right when that moment where it's just like, oh no, it's not on. You're like, ah, oh, sweetie, he, I was, yeah. I was rooting for you, but that's, I yeah, guess that, that's the that point. Breaks. That's and and to talk to talk about the writing. That's <laughs> that is definitely clearly the idea, where it's right, wrong, and lucky. Yeah. Like you, you were prepared. Something messed up, but then also, yeah, like, he didn't think about the lightning hitting the BMU and shutting everything up. Like, damn. <laughs> oh, we're gonna make a bomb! Sorry, he said it finally. <laughs> we're gonna make a bomb! <laughs> it's time to blow some shit up! <laughs> and then even Twitchell's. Uh, Listen, get out a uh, concussion grenade, a bolt puller, a uh, case of 30 out 6 ammo, uh, 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 something pin or whatever. And Governor, you don't start talking English, I'm going to come in there and duck you. And it's funny, when I first watched it as a kid, I felt that. But now it's like, I know what every single one of those things is now. This show has taught me. I know them all. All right, Bert, where do you need them? Oh, let's go get them. Let's go. I'm ready. <laughs> teaches me is like you should always have a way to unlock from like a, a an extra extra default latch to pop everything off the hinge you know you can't just be like well i had a backup to get out of there but that's not working you can't go out through the escape tube because that's that's crazy too so <laughs> Like, now I'm thinking, again, if the show had gone on that episode, we're like, oh, no, we got trapped in the panic room. It's okay, guys, just pull that lever there, and the whole door comes down. <laughs> and then, yeah, this great practical, uh, yes. man, um, just, damn, like, it's really, and like I said, that's CGI, I, I'll give it. It ain't, that's not bad. That's really not the worst in the series. They've, they have much no, worse. there's good moments yeah. of that in the show. Uh, yeah. But that when it's coming through, it's fucking 
oh man, it gets me ten, it gets me scared and tense. I love it. And then this too, I always love to point out the guns. We ran out of ammo a long ago because it blew up. Now we're just using everything. We got shovels. We got lights. We got shovels with lights on top of it. And oh, and on the like character thing, it's so cool to see Tyler start like interacting with Bert in that terms. Of, like Bert, I know you overlooked one of your backup plans. And like, oh, hey, here's an idea. Throwing him like back and forth, like actually helping him like move along. Being like, oh, hey, I've learned enough from you to know that you kind of need that push. Like, what do we do here? This is a real family episode. I don't know. Oh, yeah. In my mind. Like, I mean, you feel like most of the people are working together and with each other instead yeah. of against each other. Besides well, that one scientist, part. like... Which makes it, like I said, I understand her reasonings. I get it. And then, uh, uh, it's the, oh, back up, back up, Jennifer. Oh, man. Uh, like, everybody likes to say, oh, it's the need to know quote or the uh, critical information. Or, uh, I was out of ammo. But back up, back up generator to me is if you're going to pick a quote. To yep. quote to define who Burt Gummer is. Backup, backup generator. <laughs> is that fucking? Yeah, whoever made that like gif on on Twitter that you see every now and then get posted, that that's fantastic. Oh, back. I couldn't find that for a while, and now all of a sudden it's on there. So that's excellent. I know. I know that they put a. If you go to their tenor, like uh, if you go to the gift bar, most of them, if yeah. you you have to look up the phrase itself. Like, look up, back up. That's how, if I, if I ever end up using GIFs, I'm always like, oh, that's, okay, you got to look up the actual word or the character or the oh. names. And, because I love that, because I love that backup, backup generator one. That was what oh, yeah. I had to. I actually wrote that down in my notes when we were covering the show. We just never got to the point of, like, covering favorite lines from specific episodes. We just did the whole overall view. <laughs> it's a, uh, I mean, uh just, ah, sorry, I just think about it, like, because uh, those people, oh, yeah, it's all the guns and stuff, and I'm like, where's your backup generator? Oh, you have a gun wall, that's great. Oh, I have a gun wall, I'm Bert. Where's your fucking backup generator? Where's your fucking backup, backup generator? Because you're not Bert Gummer till you got that. Like, that's, come on, guys, you're slacking here. Well, I always kind of wondered if you would have, like, a backup, backup armory somewhere, like the complete, exactly emergency stash if he ever found himself in a position with uh, guns, because that would be a callback to part two, because I'm completely out of ammo, <laughs> this has never happened to me before, you'd think he'd be slightly prepared for something like this to happen again. Uh, he says, uh, Rosalie, or no, um... That's what Tyler asked. Oh, Bert, I know you just would or no, uh, Rosalita. Bert, I know you just wouldn't keep bullets in one place. Correct. Yeah. My backup magazine is in the safe room. <laughs> You're like, ah, Dios mio. Right. I don't know. I just think but, you would have like an extra spot. Now that you say that, too, I was now I'm really thinking like then there's a little spot like up on the hills or something where he's got he has built another bunker out of the t- like a small private bunker yep. or something. Yeah. And, oh, this Twitchell moment here. Ooh. Ooh, chicky. Good acting, dude. This is what I love about this series. Everybody's acting like hardcore. Like it's always 100% on. Um, ooh, here's a good question. Do you think tourism is sustainable in perfection? That's the bookend for this episode is is the, oh, the tourists are calling them out for El Blanco. And then, oh, yeah, new tourists are picking up. Do you think it's sustainable? I think it is, but you got to have some element of safety guarantee going on. It can't just be the perfection citizens. There should actually be more assistance in that regard to protect everybody. Like, hey, we got a couple of, like, forest rangers out here that know what's going on. They're prepared to not just Bert. You know, maybe at some point they were thinking of incorporating that in the later season, like, hey, it can't just be these guys all the time. We gotta have some other element out here, also trying to keep things in check. And that, that's not just for the tourism; that's just for everybody's safety. But I like, don't know. I think the tourism would be fine if it was just El Blanco. But when you're incorporating all the shriekers now, 
and things that could go wrong. Yeah, maybe, maybe not. Well, I, with Mixmaster in the Valley, you're just like, oh, damn. Like, uh-oh. Yeah. <laughs> you never yeah, know. I released in that episode, I'm like, okay, that's the concept of this show here. So. Yeah, yeah, oh, I know. M- Mixmaster is where it's at, dude. Like, and <laughs> community, socialize. I love, <laughs> I, I tweeted that to you guys, too. I love Bert yelling, oh, I, I hate community. But, Bert, you show up to the potluck, and you know what? You only show up with a fucking six-pack. <laughs> It's fun. Like him and Tyler both show up and they both have six packs or whatever. And Bert manages to criticize Tyler for having. <laughs> is that what you're bringing to potluck? It's, yeah, why not? Like, I don't know, Bert. What's yours? Like, you see, like, all the ladies have brought this wonderful spread of food and the two guys. Oh, yeah, we have Bert's favorite pop and my favorite beer. And Tyler's favorite beer. Like, <laughs> it's a total dude thing to do. Oh, I know. <laughs> But if you hate community so much, you can't go to the potluck. I just love the irony of that character. You can't, you can't hate it and socializing. You went right. to the potluck. You can gripe about it, but <laughs> <laughs> come on, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, I do love that episode. Uh, cool. So yeah, if you're watching along now, we you can stop or you know whatever. Uh, Wow, sorry. I just like I said, I always get caught up in how awesome that episode. I just want to watch it again. I'm really just like, damn, damn. I love good streakers. That's really where I'm at uh, with it. Uh, you know, I asked you, what's your fa- yeah, this is your favorite and why? How's this episode rate for you in all of Tremors' ness? Overall franchise or just the show? Yeah, just you know, let's call it franchise and show. Like, why not? Like, cause it's all it's all one and the same. Okay, for the show, I'd rank this probably in my top two favorite episodes easy. As far as the franchise overall, I'd probably put it right behind part three. Um, I don't know. For some reason, the first one is my, you know, it goes in order. One, two, three. I would actually put the fourth movie after this episode. Oh, wow. Even though that's very good. No, no. But I would still put, like, Nine of the Shriekers a little bit higher than that one because it's still more in line with the current timeline. And the fourth one is actually more of the originating story. Uh, so I kind of I have to separate those. I can't exactly, like, keep everything in a time. You know, if I'm going to rank them in order of favoritism, I got my one timeline, and then you got the prequel. Yeah. Yeah, it's... <laughs> That seems to be why people hate it, is that it disrupts the timeline. It's always, either they don't like the lack of Bert, or it's like, oh, where, where does this fit? Why doesn't this fit? And I get yeah, it. And I don't really hate, like, prequels per se. I mean, they serve a purpose. It's not like they don't. They fill in blanks. Sometimes they're good, sometimes they're bad. For part four, just for a quick little aside, is like, it's a fantastic movie. Peep, you got to watch it more than once, though. You watch yeah. it once, you're going to be like, Oh, this is different. This is boring. Yeah, it's different, but it's not boring. You're not giving it a chance because it's tra- You think it's Back to the Future Part 2, and it's not. No. It's just not. Back, or, I mean, Back to the Future Part 3. And it's really not. They actually did something that actually fits the universe and the story, but you have to understand how it came about, the timeline that it was shot in because there was the production histories with it. Oh, Part four is fine. It's really, really good. And, you know, gummers have a thing for redheads. <laughs> oh, man. They really do. I'd, uh, Michael Gross talked about pl- doing the episode where he plays his ancestor as a woman, and a, as a redhead. And like, oh, yeah, let's do one. It's not the 1800s. All right, let's do one with the 1500s. And, like, you can do that. Let's do that, Michael. Like, let's keep going. Just keep dialing the clock back 100 years, which I'm... Yeah. Honestly, I always get that, like, you're talking about four. Like, wouldn't you just do that? Wouldn't you just, like, oh, man, we found out that this concept worked. Let's just go back 100 years every just keep going back. Like, so many. It could be very interesting. Like, there's a lot that you can do with that. Uh, it's, right. why, it's why I love four. What you talked about where it's a side thing, where it's, like, a, it's a little side quest that really opens up the rest of the main story. Right. You don't have to know about it, but if you do, it makes everything a whole lot better. Uh, well, I really love the dirt dragons out of that, so. Ah, oh, it's one, that is the, 
we finally got good shriekers. That was what I needed. You know, didn't get into. I'd love to see some good ass blaster usage. Uh, how you know? Actually, this a good. How would you make ass blasters scary? I'm always trying to figure that one out. How would you make those scary? That's a good question. <laughs> How I'd make them scary? I don't know. I'd probably give them like a. I don't know. I'd probably give them a wingspan. I their their little flappy wings didn't really work for me, so I would make the wingspan like very wide. Like they look small, but when they unfold, they come all the way out Ooh. like a little, like a gull wing. Ooh. Uh, you know, like, if you like your gull wing car doors, or you like the gulls, but they got like they go up out and then over Ooh. and so they got these big flappy wings or like bats you know with the different vertebrae through the arms i mean i'd make them like that I, instead of you know you can still keep the ass shooting the the flames and propelling it into the air but everything else is fine it's just i don't know something wings are too wings small being so huh. tiny just always like that doesn't really seem right it's like a chicken flying it that don't work yeah <laughs> The, the logistics of the physics doesn't work. That's one I always have to yeah. wrap my ra- mind around, too. Um, I'm always sad, what too. What would you do? Uh, God, honestly, I don't know. That's kind of why I asked that question. Uh, me and Kevin were talking about Kevin Collins were talking about it, and you'd make them, like, n- like pack hunters, almost. Like, where they actually... It's what you can tell they try to do in the third one, where they, like... They stalk prey and then they work together, more like velociraptors, which aren't swarmers, but like communicate and call to each other. And they can, so if there's like three or four of them, like they'll smart and out trap you and stuff. Uh, make them slower. That's really that's why I hate the five to seven design because it's like this is just this went the opposite way of like you you managed to make it less scary by adding teeth and everything. I always laugh at that. It's like. You you fucked up something like how you did, you fucked up making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich basically is what it's like to, you just like this was easy you didn't have to do anything you can literally just copy and paste it's CGI just go back get the fucking animation copy paste we'd all be happy thank you uh, and then <laughs> so what do you think of the ass blaster name I, this is my favorite question. <laughs> I don't really have a problem with it. What else are you ever going to freaking call it? I mean, and it gives it a unique thing for the franchise. I mean, okay, so you have Graboids. You got Shri- Shriekers is pretty simple and clever. Then you got Ass Blasters. Then you got Dirt Dragons. So, I mean, you have a nice little hierarchy of evolution or evolutionary line going. I mean, I don't mind it, but you would think at some point a scientist is going to give it a official name they do actually they do it's a uh, mexicana combustus oh, no. Yeah. no actually be, um because of tremors the series uh they did a whole bunch of like little promos and stuff and one of that and this is where they did the thing with the Devo- devonian era is where they just like oh these are the actual taxonomical names of them and stuff uh like this uh graboids are caderas mexicana Ah, fucking, ah, I can't remember Shriekers. But then, yeah, Mexicana Combustus is Ass Blasters. And they actually, well, oh, the only reason I know that, remember that, is they use that in Tremor 6. One of the rare good things that, that Valerie character, uh, uh, I could give you the 401 on the Ass Blaster or the Mexicana Combustus. I'm like, uh, was someone paying attention when you made this bullshit? That was Cold Day in Hell, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah, that, that's the last... It's, it's, I, I've only it's okay. It twice, so it's my okay. memory of that is just mostly the <laughs> opening sequence, <laughs> and then I don't remember anything else. It's fine. That's why I went through it and just said it, because I was like, I fully didn't expect you to remember. I don't want people to remember. Like, And I still haven't seen all of Part 7, and I'm not going to. Uh, good, good. We won't talk about why on this podcast. Oh. Fuck no. Doesn't exist. Doesn't exist. Um... So, uh, okay. Oh, yeah. Ass Blasters. I do love Ass Blasters. Great name. Bring it the fuck on. Um, In comparison to Aftershocks, and Tremors 2 Aftershocks, because this is very similar, do you think this one does it better or worse? Or what are those things that you think that it does better or worse? Or 
I think it builds upon it, so it would at least make it equal to part two. I just wish there was like I, I would have preferred this to be a two parter. Ooh. So that they could have really stretched it out. You know, you could have had little minor victories here and there, but also more setbacks. Oh. And you could have told the story over a little bit longer because the scientist being nutty like she was. Um, you could have actually built that up a little bit more uh-huh. and gotten everybody a little more character development. Yes, you could have had them separated, brought them back, and then re-separate into different groups. Mm. So then you also then have Bert and Twitchell stuck in a room or something. Oh. You know, there's other ways you could have handled it. I just, I maybe would have preferred a two-parter so they could have really taken advantage of everything. But I understand budgets, time constraints, oh. dealing with the network, all of that. But... I th- I put this on par with part two. I wouldn't say it's better, but I would definitely say it's as good as. Wow, you uh, what you were saying there just got me thinking of what would be a really cool that a really cool scenario. The shriekers attack the market, and everyone's there, and then they have to fall back to Bert's bunker. See, like that, like the the cliffhanger of the episode would be you know the market falls, and then they got to head head to the. Oh man, oh that would be so See, good. You, you cut. As you start to think, oh, well, you do this. Well, you do that, but you can do this, this, and this first, and then all of a sudden you have an episode. Ooh. Ooh, I got tingle. That's really good. I, and now I want to get to writing. I need to be writing more. Um, damn. Well, you're recording this so you can tell yourself to write it down later. Oh, I know. Actually, I remember most of my, I might got a memory like a trap. It may go all over the place, but I do remember a lot. Uh <laughs> I'm weird. If I don't write something down, I don't remember it. But if I write it down, I can lose the paper within five seconds and I remember it. <laughs> oh, nice. Way to go, weird. brains. <laughs> <laughs> brains are weird. <laughs> like this one. What are your thoughts on piracy? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> piracy? Uh, well, okay. Because I like to... if. You have a, I really do like your podcast, and I want other people to listen to it. And, you know, like I said, I was listening, and I had my thoughts that I went through or whatever. And with the way that everything that has happened with Tremors, the series, uh, the episodes out of order, like, you can't... If it wasn't for that fucking Vimeo link with the ones in the right order, everywhere else is out of order, man. Like, it's fucking boggles. You can even Google it, and it's out of order. Uh, I ask, what are your thoughts on piracy? Because m- me, myself, and I, uh, I like buying physical media. I am watching the DVDs of this, folks, just so you know we can prove. Like I didn't, but also when I'm not doing the podcast part of this, I prefer to watch it downloaded because it's just so much easier to put it up on the computer playlist and just fucking go through. Uh, we're going through Stargate Atlantis right now. I haven't watched Stargate Atlantis yet, but we're just. Watching it on a whole, we got all, just finally downloaded the fifth season, and it's just nice to just watch it all the way through. But then you go out and buy other stuff, you buy merch and stuff to actually support uh, the people that make it. When it comes to this, and like I've downloaded this, and the order is still always fucking wrong. I'm always so I feel bad for the people who are pirating it, and they're like, "Oh man, they're gonna get it," and like the order's wrong, and they they won't know. They'll have no fucking idea, and it's like so. In this case, is piracy a good thing or a bad thing? Is like, yes or no? To me, it's how you treat. It's how you treat it. Like you, I've done my, I've done this before too. But my rule was, if I have to download this, I'm not going to watch it on the network. They don't get my money because if they don't make it accessible to me right away, that's their fault. However. If I watch it that way, I will buy the show immediately day Mm -hmm. one. I'm not going to wait till it's cheap. I'm not going to wait six months till Black Friday. I'm going to buy it day one because day one is when the biggest percentage of the royalties go to the people who made the show Mm -hmm. specifically. So they get paid instead of this whole network rating thing. So that's always been my rule. I, I had to do that. With part of Ash vs. Evil Dead when it first aired. That's why I said um, that. But I also did it with Game of Thrones, but then they finally had the HBO Max app or whatever it was at the time. Go now. There was like five of them. I don't know. But like, I go 
through this, but then I buy the stuff on DVD or Blu-ray. I'm a big physical media guy. On our Tremors giveaway, we gave away the whole oh my God, franchise, yeah. the first and the 4K, the three sequels, the two books like you're showing, <laughs> the DVD set. I mean, it was a glorious physical media collection that we handed out to somebody, so they had a little bit of everything. Yeah. And I thought that was awesome, by the way. You can't really get rid of it, but a lot of people just download it and then don't give a damn. Yeah. And to your thing about episode orders, it does remind me like of another show that you could... It's not on physical media, and I love the show to death. I watched it when it first aired, but the only way to watch it is to pirate it, and it's the TV show called Brimstone. Mm. From 1998, starring John Glover and Peter Horton a fantastic show that was canceled by Fox but you can only get it by downloading it illegally. I have my own burned copies from years ago from VHS to a DVD then onto the computer but then I also downloaded the copies from online hoping they would be better quality however they are not So, but they're also out of order. <laughs> they aired episodes out of order. There is a proper production order to them so when I had to, when I downloaded them, I actually renamed them, retitled them, everything. <laughs> but you know, for people that have these physical media things, you've got DVDs. You can get a free software that will burn these to your computer, so you can watch them digitally if you want. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go through the process of downloading if you already have your DVDs. You own the DVDs. You do what you want with them. Fuck yeah! Oh man. man. It makes me really sad to hear about, I've never heard of Brimstone or anything like that, but to hear that, like, oh, it is completely unaccessible unless you go out of the bounds to watch it. That's It's a Warner Brothers TV show and, um, like, Shout Factory for you physical media people. Oh. They've been trying to get the damn show for years, and Warner Brothers won't let them have it for whatever reason, but they'll license out, like, you know, Friday the 13th movies to them to, to get released and other movies. It's like... Can the TV division, like, unzip their fly and let us get it out of there? Like, jeez. <laughs> I really wonder about these shows. Uh, like, what the There's fuck? There's a lot of shows like that. Space Above and Beyond, VR5. I mean, I could go through all these 90s shows for sure that have never been released. So. Oh. Uh, why do you think that weird shady shit happens? I don't know. Like, what, like is it just fans aren't interested enough in it and no one wants to try or something else. Like I'm over, like, like I, said, I think about this a lot. Like, why would you hide this? What? My, my okay. This is the answer to succinct that question. Let me reverse it. Why do you think if you have people who are saying I bought all seven Tremors movies and I love them all, why would you Universal like hide this if their whole goal was to make money? And to have you know sell tremors on an empty box, why would you go out of your way to hide this or fuck it up and everything? Like conspiracy time thoughts. My opinion is they don't see big money in this franchise. They see the the immediate cash grab. Just to hey, can this thing recoup its costs and we don't lose money? Then let's do it. Is it something we could throw on like our sci-fi channel and rerun it for several years and make money off of the the replay rights and the syndication rights? Or can we send it over to TBS? And they pay us for, for the license on the movie to run, and then we, we still get syndication. So that's my idea. Is they don't see the big money in this, but they see, en they see enough that, hey, we... This gives us an immediate cash flow coming back in. We won't lose anything. We're going to break even. We might get a little bit ahead, but we're not going to make big money. And that's what a lot of these places want. They, For years, they've all been looking for the next big franchise. You thought Aragon was going to be the next big fantasy franchise. Nope. <laughs> you didn't get that one either. You thought... You know, Hunger Games was big to a point. It wasn't Twilight. I mean, I'm not endorsing Twilight, but let's be honest here. Twilight was money, money, money. After Harry Potter, it was Twilight. Everybody's looking for these big franchises. Golden Compass, that didn't work out, but the TV show is doing well for yeah. HBO Max. But that's largely a British production that HBO Max is on with. It's BBC and 
and HBO funding that thing. So it's a it's a twofer. Two people are in on that just to make the money. So they're all looking for these big super franchises, but they they want to mine what they can out of the littler franchises. But you put in what you expect to get out. If you are only expecting to get middle of the road money, and that's all you're going to put into it, that's all you're going to get. You're not going to put ten million dollars into you know, the next pitch black movie and expect it to be $300 million box office and spurn a franchise that'll get you a billion. It's not, it don't work like that. If you want to spend the money and you have to do it right too. Uh, so that, that's my thought is they, they just see it as like, no, oh, this isn't a cornerstone thing. This, this isn't even like classic monsters. Like we used to hate anyway, that we can now make real money off of. This is, no, this is a franchise that did all right. Let's just keep it going just enough to, to get a little money here and there. It's that every time, oh, we need some money in the bank. Let's make another Tremors movie. Yeah, we lost enough money on the the newest Mummy movie. We let, Let's do about two more Tremors movies and let's, you know, relaunch like the Hulk or something. <laughs> an Avengers movie and make our money back. You know? As, it's funny you say that like instant cash grab thing. One of the when I was talking to Glenn, one of the things that just fucking floored me, and I'll stare at the camera on this one, it fucking floored me was that Glenn was like, "Oh yeah, the reason that the seventh Tremors movie got made was pretty much exactly what you said, where the thirtieth anniversary happened, and everybody like a whole bunch of people came out to it, and uh, when they had done the twenty fifth anniversary, they had a five hundred seat theater and they filled it up." And then when they did the 30th, it only had a 110-seat theater, and they filled it, overpacked it, and then everybody online was wanting to show up. And Universal literally was like, wow, there's all of these fans that will just buy anything. Like, and that's the Steve Wilson, oh, yeah, you can put you can put Tremors on an empty box and sell it. Uh, and they literally, oh, yeah, we'll, we're going to cash grab one more out here, but boom because these people will buy it no matter what. And man, it always makes me sad because uh, there's a the Q and A that they did. The very last like fan that says anything out of the whole night of everything that they're doing is this girl gets up and she's like, "Burt Gummer's my hero, and he like I didn't have a lot of friends, and he I just love him so much, and he taught me how to be a better person and be a better neighbor and all this." And then like you know. That was ended it. And I just think Universal's sitting there the whole time while this person's doing, mm, yes, Bert Gummer's your hero. Let us not do nothing to him at all. <laughs> like, ooh, yeah, let's get a little more money from you with your feelings and emotions. It really fun. Point, They probably saw Michael Gross and they're like, well, we're not really paying him that much money as opposed to Kevin Bacon, Fred Ward, Reba McIntyre, any of the other cast, I mean, other than what, Melville? You know, they could have gotten back for, for inexpensive like they did on their show. But, like, any of, like, the really bankable stars, like, are you really going to pay Kevin Bacon, like, $15 million just to come back oh. or something? No, because that's that's your budget for the whole I know, like, that, movie. that's $4 million more than the budget of the first movie. <laughs> exactly. Like, and Fred was busy with, like, a successful TV show. I forgot what it was called, but it was, like, a military show. I don't know if it was one of the NCIS ones or whatever, but, you know, he was doing great in a TV show. Why would he, I mean, look at, okay, you want to pay me $10 million to do a Tremors movie that you treated the whole franchise like crap for years? Or do I stick with this very good paying job on CBS that gives me job satisfaction, gives me a consistent paycheck, and I get to spend time with my family for the three months of the year when we're not in production? It's it's mad, man. No, as much as I as much as I would love all of those characters to come back, whenever I see people like get mad, oh no, Kevin Bacon sucks because he turned his back on Tremors or, uh, you know, Reba, where's she at or where's Fred War? It's like, guys, I mean, what you just said, would you? It, it's really hard when the other people, the other end of the money funnel, is not caring, and you're like, well, why would I? It's so hard to keep trying. Like, come on. Right, unless you feel like the creative itch to be like, you know, I'll do this at a discount on my right because this is something I truly believe in and I want to revisit. That's the only way you can catch people on 
any sort of like, oh yeah, I'll, I'll dump this job for this. You should already be feeling like I'm kind of done with the consistent TV gig. I want to do something fun to get my passion back. But if you haven't lost your passion, then what's the point? But, you know, you, you brought up Kevin Bacon in his unaired pilot. I know you're probably going to get into that on its own at some point, but I don't know. When I, when I heard he was interested in doing getting back to the show and doing that again, and he tried to get his pilot going, I just, I remember the interviews. I, I should find this for everybody, but he did say, I'm trying to get everybody back together because yeah. Universal doesn't want it. And I'm like, if anybody could have gotten the band back together, that was the golden goose there. Because he wanted Stampede back. He wanted Fred Ward back. You could have gotten probably Reba back just for shits and giggles. Yeah, I mean, you would have paid her. But she might have also done it at a discount, too. It, I, I've already done that episode. And that's the part that actually boggles my fucking mind about that oh, yeah. that TV show. Is that... Kevin, are you telling me that after 25 years of the entire, like, everybody that loves Tremors in any kind of way saying, we want Kevin Bacon back, and you get him back, and opening up those avenues, like you said, to, oh, no, he wants to bring in other people, and you go, no, like, no, fuck you, and then, to, oh, yeah, no, no, no stampede, no, we're going to maybe completely reboot the universe, you're like, hey, like, come, stop it. Like, yeah. Yeah, we like you want to do this, but we want to do this our style. We don't want to. We don't want to deal with them anymore. Like, are you kidding me? I mean, and sorry if I didn't remember your episode. Oh no 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 no! There's a bunch. No no no, you're fine. No 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 no. You are. F- I, I bring it up just to more like say like, oh no, I've already been there, and it doesn't make any fucking sense to me because it just. Well, yeah, it's like you had Kevin Bacon. Oh my god! And just hearing that the pilot was horrible was like. It's not his fault. No, it's, it's not. Everybody else you hired to uh, produce, direct, and write the damn thing. I actually have to say, so okay, it's not. I actually, the episode, I do an episode where I, I read the whole script. I do all my voices and oh, stuff. You the script. Yeah, and I have is I've read the script. I've read it a bunch, and I did. I do a read through of the script. It's really good, and the reason that I accept it is, so people like to shit on Kevin. He was doing it for money. He was doing it just because. He needed something. You you read this and you see what the writer, Andrew Miller. It's like people call it the Kevin Bacon Tremors pilot. I have started to refer to it as the Andrew Miller Tremors pilot because he takes that character and it's like, man, this is not dignified for uh, Kevin Bacon as an. The whole point of the the TV show is that he's a washed up guy living in his heyday and. It's not going well for him anymore, and he's trying to recapture that old magic, which is literally what he's trying to do with the TV show. And you're like, "This is amazing!" Like, th- like this, re- and it really works too. There's a, actually there's a little. I would say it maybe gets a little too R in the direction because it's from the. If you love horror, uh, sure. Andrew Miller is Kazan in Cube, and then he brought in Vincenzo Natali, the director of Cube, to do it. To actually direct the direct the series, so that's where it's got a real. It gets a little more horry, more horrorish than yeah. the other ones do. But I, I, like, I, like I love the Night of the Shriekers. I don't mind that. Like we have enough comedy sometimes that if you can swing that needle back to be like, no, this is scary. Uh, right. Like it, it really. I, oh, we people are. Oh, Tremors isn't scary, and I'm like. Did we watch the same first movie where a man was dragged <laughs> physically into the earth screaming? Right, and the uncovering of the hat from the base. And the imagining that under the ground. Uh, when Kevin and the other, I keep saying the other Kevin too, just to differentiate because there's two Kevins in this conversation. When Kevin Collins and I were watching the fourth movie and the dirt dragons, he pointed out a really good one that I hadn't even thought of. Where they pull a dude, the dirt dragons pull a dude under the ground, and there's one on one arm and then another on a leg, and you're like, oh, they pulled him apart underground. Like, we may not see it because of practical effects and we just get a, a dragged under the dirt, but the implication there is that man was just ripped in half, screaming under the dirt, and just the horror, like the absolute horror of that. 
I'm always uh, when it comes. I I love the Dirt Dragons. I love that you love them. Are, are into them too because they're oh, yeah. they're super underutilized. I think the only that one scene in Tremors Four is the only one that we get. Obviously, but they're fucking scary. They're juping and jumping. Uh, the the original Tremors Five has a great bit where they're swarming. They do the same swarmy thing as this. That's why I say you can tell SS has a thing for it. And there's like hundreds of them. And they like they will like hit a car and just there's so many of them that they can knock it over. And it's like, oh, <laughs> that scares the fuck out of me. Because it's like, it's the multiplicity of shriekers, but then they're under the ground. So you wouldn't, yeah. you wouldn't know it until like, pop, 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 pop. That's great. I yeah. love that. Tremors is scary. So that's where the Kevin Bacon pilot, I wouldn't have minded the horror aspect of it a little bit. And it's actually really good. If you get a chance, if you, if you want to listen to one episode, it's actually the Kevin, the other Kevin says it's probably my best one where I just read through the pilot because uh, it's, yeah, it's, it was, it was really good. And the Gummers were coming back and Fred Ward and Earl was coming back. I'm pretty sure Mixmaster was in the valley. That's why the Graboid looks like it does. Uh, like okay. if you, if you, re- cause there's a whole, there's a whole company, like there's the trilateral Proudfoot corporation in this TV show. There's this yeah. company called data Lux in that, in the pilot that they're doing a lot of secret shit, researching graboids and stuff. And it's just like, okay. we don't get a full view of it, but you're like, I can see where you might end up going with that. If you keep that thread line going, like we're talking about with this, where it's just like, if you watch the wheel, this is where that would just keep going. Um, See, I think Universal should put the damn pilot out for everybody to oh. just be like, let us be the judge of it. You already shot it. What's the worst that you do? You you put on a little opening credit and a little end credit. Yeah, if it's 40 minutes, whatever. Put it out there. What it's... do you have to lose? To the cost of making a DVD? Or just throw it up on the Peacock Network? Oh, you put know? it somewhere. Somewhere, man. Because it's ridiculous. You see, like, the trailer footage, like, oh. It's on like some links somehow, and I've watched it a hundred times, and I'm like, this looks like something I would like. Yeah. Maybe, but it at least gets me excited to. I want to see this. It's Please. different, but if I. If you're not gonna put it out, what the hell did you sit on it for? That's I... what a lot of these unaired pilots, you, you get like pictures or trailers for. It's like, what the hell are you doing? Just throw it out there. Hey. It's all film too, so if you're wondering, like, oh no, we need to like do a little more. It's 60 minutes. It's a full 60 minutes filmed, done, finished VFX and everything. Like they don't have to do anything. Like in my mind, you could uh, the Arrow Video people has uh, have actually tried to get it to happen. For the they tried to get it for the 4K Blu-ray. But Universal was like, no, 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 we don't want to go through the trial or whatever legal. See, I you that face, I feel you. We're like, what? And what? That if they dropped that trailer, holy, make the internet explode. Oh yeah. That would that would fucking blow. I'm always. This is something I was I was uh, talking to Glenn and e- I emailed Steve about, where I'm always blown away by the verified accounts on Twitter talking about tremors. No, I mean like the like what I what I I, don't, I use that cuz it's more just like that's what I see, but the like those showrunners and producers and directors and writers of like really fucking huge things loving tremors. And yeah. there's always they're always like where's that Kevin Bacon pilot? Where's that Kevin Bacon pilot? And I'm sitting here just like if you have Everybody, like if your general internet consensus is like, we want this and release it, just like you said, put it out there. If it sucks, we will decide that for ourselves. You, yeah, exactly. You, like if we already feel like parts five through seven, especially seven, are like horrible, like what's the worst that you can do? Just just throw it out there. Even Like I said, throw it on, on Peacock. Charge like $1.99 oh. for a pay-per-view on your damn app. What's the worst that happened? I'd buy it. I'd buy people it. people buy it? Well, hey, you just made something that you literally did nothing to do but upload it to your service. Oh, man. I would try to find a way to have a Blu-ray player and get the Blu-ray to buy it. Man, Oh, man, I don't... I'd buy it. I mean... <laughs> I've been saying this ever since it came out, and they can't. They're like, nope, we're not going to series with this. Well, and put it on a 
flipping DVD. I mean, what's the worst? I mean, so you don't have to invest in Blu-ray. DVD is super cheap to re- reproduce. I mean, well, I don't know. It's infuriating as all hell. No, I get you. No kidding. That's... <laughs> uh, Put it out there, Universal. I know they're not listening. Like, they fucking... They don't listen to anybody. They don't give a goddamn shit. They don't even want to listen to freaking Marvel and, like, Disney about, like, hey, we would like to get the Hulk back. And they're like, no, we're going to keep our existing contract. Oh, yes. They're going to offer us, like, $150 million. No, we're going to sit on this till the contract's up. Meh, we're, we're good. We're going to make a movie. We're just going to let you use the character, even though it's really yours anyway. Even though everyone would love a Planet Hulk movie. Dude, that'd be sweet. Talk about, like... War Hulk? Yeah, like, come on. We all want it. You know, give it to us. <sighs> so, yeah. I'm gonna... God damn, now I'm just thinking about the pilot. You got, I didn't think we'd get to that point, but now I'm just thinking about it. It should be out oh, there. That, that's, whenever I think Tremors, I'm like, God damn, that pilot. It just... <laughs> It gets under my skin unless I start watching the first movie. It really should, and it really should. Uh, Get my Kevin Bacon Tremors fix, you know. <laughs> Got to have that ass picking. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what would you do for a season two of this show? For you... se- season two, I would bring back Steve. I would bring back the crew and give them full authority to make the damn show as they do. <laughs> End of story. See, I was more looking for ideas, but that's I like your answer better. Like, <laughs> um, but if I was gonna do anything, I would definitely get more into um, a bird finding the the science base. Yeah, that, that was hidden in the valley. Oh, yeah. I think you don't drag that on for nope. too long. I think you get into that, and then you start figuring out how you deal with all the other crap you found in there. Mm-hmm. Mix I master. That was fascinating. Uh. And, that, and, and as I was watching in the DVD episode order, I'm like, isn't this technically the last episode of the season or something? Because I never even remembered it from the, when it first aired, because I only watched like a handful of episodes, and I'm like, eh, this isn't for me. But when I was watching it on the DVD order for our podcast, I'm like, wait, this seems really early, and it's got him walking off into the distance at the end. I'm like, this seems really weird for yep. early mid season early mid season episode order uh it's uh <laughs> sorry now i just keep thinking about that uh cuz it's really weird the way that it's filmed too and then you get larry talking about it afterwards yeah. uh and you haven't even met larry yet either too so you're like what the fuck is happening exactly uh, i was like what the <laughs> hell this for the episode or talk about so, like, Something that makes my brain fucking tick. Maybe the Kevin Bacon pilot's yours, but the episode order on this is the one that makes me. Yeah. Uh, and but yeah, that you'd have to do. You totally have to do trilateral and the Proudfoot Corporation. Bring back Christopher Lloyd for more episodes. Uh, do you have a Mixmaster monster? Everyone's always I got that one. Would have done something with. The vegetation and like a horse, maybe. And a horse? A cactus horse. Holy sh! Oh, cool. And have it be like completely crazy too, be- or yeah, because you know, Rosalita had the horses, didn't she? Or was they- yeah? Were those cows? No, those were horses. She had- her and Harlow had horses. Yeah, I would have done a horse because that goes back into the previous seasons or in the movies too, because they had the horses. You know, it just makes me think, like, do something with a horse. A cactus horse. I like that. I'm a good drawer. I might have to I might have to make that for you. A cactus horse. There you go. <laughs> you have one you would do? Um, oh, oh, mine. The one that I say, I actually did draw this, too. Shrieking Grab Blasters. You have to combine. Oh, that's right. You have to combine a Shrieker, a Graboid, and an Ass Blaster together. It, it, again, that wheel thing. You introduce this compound. Obviously, you gotta introduce it to your main monster too. And I, I did. I drew. I finally oh, drew yeah. it the other day. Oh, it's a, actually it did what you were talking about with the ass blaster wings, where they extend. But it's got millipede yeah. legs that halfway form into the wings too, and so then it, it burrows and ground. Oh, I gotta, I gotta take a picture of it, and put it, put it up somewhere. I was quite proud of it. <laughs> as long as you don't make it look like a human being. Oh, oh like, no. 
<laughs> you know, I said that thing with the other shows like this is an alien creature that now oh, looks human. No, I said that thing with us shriekers and cloning and all that, and I'm like, please, but I don't, I don't mean like let's combine a shrieker and a human being. I've seen that Rule Thirty Four, and I don't need to see it again. Um, it look like Krang from like Ninja <laughs> Turtles. <laughs> 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 Or something out of, like, Resident Evil or Silent Hill. Well. <laughs> um, so, I just had to tell you, this isn't so much a question, but again, listen to the Suns and Shadows, Shadows podcast, uh, people. Um, you can smoke weed out of a shotgun uh, using <laughs> several things. Uh, you have to plug up one hole. Uh, and stuff it in the side, and you got to use a whole bunch of weed, and it's a terrible idea, and it comes from Platoon. If you were wondering where the idea, you were talking about somebody must have seen oh, it. that's where it came from. It's Platoon, and that's where I know, I just was like, oh my god, <laughs> that's so fucking, <laughs> the shotgun, <laughs> it's a, uh, god damn. Uh, so yeah, just so you know, it's totally possible, it's dumb, but it's a, a legit thing that Vietnam soldiers actually did uh, during okay. that era. And they did it, too, uh, to do the the term shotgun of when you blow it into another person's mouth. In that term of cons- conserving weed, you'd smoke it and then shoot it into the next guy and blow it back and forth. So that's where shotgunning comes from. That yeah. reminds me of one of my first experiences with marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you could tell us if you want, but I doubt you will. Uh, <laughs> or will you? No. So, what's your worst retail story? Again, I want people to listen to your podcast, so I have to make references hey, to. No, no problem. Uh, worst retail story. She probably when I was working at Office Max. No, Circuit City. When they fired me for not huh. selling enough extended service plans, but I was uh. top seller for everything else in the department. I was selling big screen TVs, DVDs, DVD players. I was numero uno. But I was like number three on selling the warranties, and that wasn't good enough. <sighs> it's never worth it, guys. You just end up paying more. Just go buy a new TV. <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> never buy the extended warranty from half these places. They're they're horrible anyway. All right. Well, that was actually a good question to ask. Um, um, really, uh, do you have any questions? That's always how I like to end it. What's your favorite or worst retail story? Oh, fuck, man. So, uh, I've been going barefoot for 10 years now, and it's not illegal. Look this up. Go Google it. Is there such a law as no shoes, no shirt, no service? Is there any health ordinance? No, there's not. There is total capitalistic free enterprise. If somebody puts a sign up that says that, respect their wishes, and they can obviously kick you out. Actually, I have, a, I have a personal thing where if I see that sign, I will always put my shoes on before I enter a store. But if I don't see your sign, I'm going to walk into your store without shoes on because it's a fucking free country. That's why I love Bert Gummer. Like, fuck you. What are you going to do? There's no laws against it. Stop me, motherfuckers. But uh, my worst retail story is every time, or not every time, it happens less and less, but like, man, fucking some people will really let you know their own insecurity and problems by telling you that you're going to hell for not having shoes on your feet. Like, man, you learn a lot about society and what we consider right, wrong, or good, bad, just by the way certain people will treat you or how much someone will choose to yell at you. That's always my just like, I mean, because like, I carry them on. That's always my thing. I will literally carry them on my physical person and take them out and put them on when asked. Okay. And, but then people will fucking still keep yelling. And you're just like... So I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my worst retail story. That's it. I actually, no joke, I was buying a $300 TV once, me and my wife were, and we got the TV down all the way, like, taking it to the counter. And as we were doing that, the lady was like, oh, you have to put on shoes before you buy the TV. It was like we just spent like an hour in the store talking to your people and everything, and now we're literally taking the TV up here. Okay, whatever. I guess this is why I carry the shoes on me, just because it's like just much easier to do that. Oh. You're like one minute from checking out and getting out of there. What's the problem? I, <laughs> oh god. I know, right? Um, 
Hold on one second here. Um, Got to save this. Uh, back up. Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, as you can say, any more questions? That's always... Hit me with it. Boom. No? Uh, no, I don't think I got a question for yeah. you. I talk a lot, so I can see how I sum it up. I get it. <laughs> Honestly. No, you're fine. I was just going to maybe ask you, like, so... If you've listened to our any of our podcasts, do you have a favorite episode? Uh, honestly, I'm. And ca- yes, you can say Tremors. Oh no! Well, I mean that's easy enough, or whatever. I can <laughs> say the episode where you guys, where Steve Wilson was talking about me on air, which is that that. But uh, I'm. I need to finish your Ashes vs. Evil Dead episodes because I can tell that you're both horror fans and it's just I, I love I love listening to people get into something that they like I could tell with the Tremors episode that like you guys like Tremors or whatever but it wasn't uh, necessarily your main focus it was just something oh hey it's got a TV show we're doing that kind of thing like let's do that with Ash vs. Evil Dead I could tell your guys' own personal anticipation for the series and then when you got to watch it in real time talking about it I was even like <laughs> Oh no! Uh, the your first season episode, uh, talking through your first season episode. You're talking about Ruby, and I was like, "Oh, they don't know! Oh, they don't know! <laughs> oh no! Oh, like oh oh! I I can't say. I mean, it's in the past or whatever. But my mind is just oh, I can't say anything because like oh, they don't know. <laughs> just it's cute. So that's what your Ash vs Evil Dead episodes. I'm having a a good joy on. So go listen to that cool. at the Suns and Shadows podcast. <laughs> Thank you very much. No, I'm, and that's not a shameless plug either. Like I said, it was, I need to finish that one episode I was on because I was really into it. So, uh, yeah, no problem. I mean, anybody who wants to try us out, we we cover a bunch of different genres, so please do. And we're always looking for new ideas. Yeah, we we're, we're big fans of the Tremors movies, and I wasn't a big fan of the show back when it first aired. First few episodes, I gave up, but. You know, when I got the DVD set years ago, I'm like, this is good. This is fun. This is definitely worthy. And so to tie everything back in, you know, if you listen to our show, we do all like it. We just feel like it, there was definitely some mis, misuse, mismanagement. And so it was not set up to succeed by Sci-Fi Channel very clearly. Bonnie Hammer, keep your hands out of Sci-Fi shows. We don't need ya. you. You you keep paying for your wrestling Friday <laughs> nights and, and stay away from the good stuff. Oh man, missteps. That's what Kevin Collins and I were talking about. Where it's like, man, you can tell that it really wants to. There is something here, but there's a bunch of things that happen along the way. We're like, damn, man. Did- well, they did the same stuff. You're watching Stargate Atlantis. They treated yes when they first got some shows. They treated them like. Queens, but after a couple of seasons, they're like, okay, nope, time's up. Now we want you to do what we want you to do. Uh, at least Stargate would push back, and they're like, no, we're going to keep making the show that we want. <laughs> Eventually, it caught up to them on Stargate Universe. Yeah. Canceled. Uh, it's funny, like, I grew, I consider my growing up with film is the sci fi channel itself. Uh, yep, me too. That was, a, a, I mean, fucking talk about formative experiences through my life. I am a huge Sci Fi Channel original movie fan, monster movie me fan. Too. I can find, I can find the good in just about any shitty ass movie. So when I tell you that Tremors five through seven suck balls, you can know that I really come from a like that takes a lot to suck balls in my universe of that stuff right. and. What you were talking about with Stargate Atlantis, man, I remember watching, or Stargate and Atlantis, watching those at the time, you can feel that. I was like 12, 13 years old. You can feel that shit through the screen. And then even like, uh, they they do the joke in Stargate where like, oh, that show was canceled? I didn't even know it had premiered yet. Like, and you're like, oh yeah. Stargate reference, which is like literally my favorite television show of all time. It's, that's odd. Oh, I don't even know what that show is. Uh, it's just like, come on. But it's, it hurts. Like, you're always just like, you can tell the creative people actually trying to fight back. And that was my first, like, oh, wow. Uh, this is the corporate side of things. And really, that always it's always signified to me by the change from sci-fi 
to or science fiction to sci-fi with the fucking Y and the the double Y, the S Y, F Y. I'll never never call it sci-fi. I'll always call it Skiffy. Skiffy. Ah, <laughs> Skiffy. A sci-fi channel. Yeah, I call it if because they had those what if commercials. That was always my if. Uh, those are great, man. Yeah, they really were. Someone on Reddit posted one. It took me back nostalgia-wise. I was like, oh my god, those were fucking dope. Why would you change that name? <laughs> it was a perfect, perfect name. And it's that, that wrestling thing, lowest common de- denominator. I love wrestling, yeah, it too. It started with ECW on Tuesday nights. I know, because it bumped one of my... It bumped shows I was watching at the time. Oh. Every night. That's what I mean. Like, it hurts. Like, you're what. You're literally watching corporate actions take place. And you're like, come on, man. And I do. I vividly remember. Maybe that's why I'm, I do this so hard is that I vividly remember that change and that shift and just being like, man, this went from being a really fun, awesome channel to just like infomercials late at night. That Come on. I'm out. And crossing over with John Edward and <sighs> things like that and stupid game TV shows. I mean. Boy, Sci-Fi Channel, what did you do to yourself? Ah, uh, man. And, yeah, uh, one of the things you read in the Seeking Perfection book, they were, lo- oh, we love Tremors, we love Tremors. They did publicity like crazy for this. And I actually remember a lot of, the, like I said, what I was talking about oh, with, the, with the n- nomenclature stuff and internet, like they were doing shit on the internet, actually, even before it was really big. And then I they just turned downloading the wallpaper before the first episode. Yeah, I had them all. I probably still have them on a, See? somewhere around here. And to turn around and be like, "Oh no, no, we don't actually." Oh, you made it by point zero one of a percent, and we would. And if you hadn't, we would can't. We wouldn't cancel you. Do you really care? Did what the same crap to Farscape when they canceled it? You're like your ratings are low, but it was actually a memo that was misunderstood, and there was all this stupid crap going on. First wave got canceled for similar reasons uh, i mean i could go down the freaking list and it's like oh my god the reason that but Trem- every network is horrible the reason they told tremors the series that it, it got canceled it didn't get farscape numbers yeah and then they canceled farscape for not getting whatever you know, numbers Galactica numbers or stargate numbers you know? so you're just like what <laughs> bullshit what is this i straight up call bullshit because <laughs> honestly they had a season five lined up for farscape and due to a memo going to one of the production companies that wanted to stop making it anyway, they were like, oh, well, there was a contract exploit that, or a contract loophole that got exploited by this little production company that got a memo saying that Sci-Fi Channel might not want to pick it up anymore. It was not in reference to season five. It was in reference to the show overall. So after season five, it was probably going to be the end of it. I mean, there used to be this website that had this whole breakdown, like somebody did the investigations and everything. Oh, like I did! Producers, people at the network, they had it all lined out, and it was due to just stupid memo that got to this part of the production company that wasn't even the main production company, to some, like, partner production company in Germany that didn't want to make the show anyway. And once it got to that point, they're like, okay, well, I guess we're canceled. Then Sci-Fi was like, okay, well, then we're canceling it. And it wasn't a ratings thing. They wanted to renegotiate the budget or drop the episode numbers down. So the whole thing is a big, big hoop on. They didn't want to go through that with First Wave, so they just straight up canceled that. Yeah, the ratings were tanking on that, but they weren't that bad. Man, I, like... The more we have this conversation, a story, man, I, swear. I, I hate money. I don't know. Damn it, man. Like now I'm just pissed. This is the foundation of our podcast is, you know, when we get to some of these other shows is to talk about some of these things. Right. So. Uh, I would love to be it's on one. We're trying to keep memories alive and right. keep everything going. Yeah, yeah you see that. Still worth watching. Uh, that's your podcast, Cree. It's, it's kind of what I love, like learning new things. I didn't even know there was an Exorcist TV show. I didn't either. That was a. That was Kevin who told us that, and he only didn't know about it until recently too. Like that was a news flash for me, where I'm like, okay. And then see, it's that thing where I'm like, man, I wasn't interested before, but yeah. now that you've told me, I kind of want to. <laughs> yeah. What? Why don't that? Season's I... pretty decent. So. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, an Exorcist TV show. Talk about a terrifying movie, and ooh, ooh, oh, that would be good. Um. Yeah. Goddamn money. That's where I'm at. That's, I just... 
I wish I could be poor and just do everything. Uh, you know, right. like it's now they say that that's the Burt Gummer lifestyle. Yeah. You know, like I just want to eat my cactus with my hot sauce, and uh, yeah. just not have to fuck with anything and nobody's fucking with me. That would be great. Government leaves me alone, and I do my thing in peace. Just chill. Um, yep, with this cannon. <laughs> <laughs> All this time, I've awaited our maiden voyage together. Yep. She sailed with you first. <laughs> Just, like, that's, the character shit in this show is always the best. I hope Kevin picks uh, Little Paranoia Among Friends. I think that's his favorite episode, so I'm hoping... That's a really good one, too. Because it's... Uh, I that one, but when you said nobody... You're like, hey, pick whatever you want. I'm like, Night of Shriekers. Yeah. You're like, done. <laughs> I'm if, like, yes. Uh, for monsters, Night of the Shrieker wins out for me. But for straight up character, like the whole deconstruction of Bert, paranoia among friends is the top episode of the of the whole season to me. Uh, just like, damn, damn, this is really. That's why I made him my stinger in that <laughs> at the end of that podcast yeah. episode where he's like. You're all nuts. <laughs> these, I just want you to know that these people are loco. Did he call us? Don't, you, don't want you to upset the locals. Did he call us loco? No, no, no. I said loco. No, I'm pretty sure you were right the first time. <laughs> like it, it's, it's like a, a, a sitcom episode. And that's what I love. I love about this, this whole series. You can tell Michael Gross's family ties influences on it. Like, there's a huge, like, and this is only as I've been doing this podcast, specifically watching each episode that I picked up on it, where you're like, whoa, this is, so this is Family Ties with Graboids. Okay. That sounds like a pretty good show. I've never even really watched Family Ties, but I'm more like, that That concept in and of itself intrigues me. I might have to, okay, keep it up, Michael. Keep it up. I watched it as a kid, so when I saw him in the first Tremors movie, I'm like, Boy, this is a flip. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really need to see Steve Keaton. Everybody talks about it like that, and I'm just like, God, I gotta see the difference. I gotta uh, acting. I'm an actor myself, so it's just like I gotta, I gotta see that. It's so cool. <laughs> uh, I think we've pretty much exhausted everything. Unless you have anything else, uh, actually, anything to plug or put out for anything. No, just uh, give us a check out at Sons and Shadows. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. We're on Instagram. But it's at Sons and Shadows Cast, and we have a YouTube channel. Just look up Sons and Shadows. We just do a bunch of fun little videos. I'm in the process of moving, so some of our videos and other content are a little bit on hold. But give us a check. Give us a listen. Love to hear from you. Awesome. Um, yeah. Uh, you can stay through my thank yous if you want. It's a whole list of thank yous. Uh, or you can sign off, too, because uh, you've oh, been... Go ahead. Um, okay, yeah, awesome. Honestly, because you guys are always in it, so I just got to do this. Um, holy, got a hole. All right, here we go, folks. I had to keep a giant notebook of this podcast. I didn't think I'd do so many notes for this podcast. Woo! This, it takes up a lot, folks. Um, here we go. <laughs> because there's so many people to thank. Uh, thank you obviously to good old Jeff Johnson here uh, and Kevin Smith there's a like these guys are great dudes please please go listen to their podcast please and thank you if you're not I fucking hate you you suck um, there's another Kevin at Beetle Bear Kevin Collins uh, go check him out he's been on a couple episodes with me uh, just hanging out and stuff I want to thank Baby Fark McGee's axe. get ready for Burt Gummer Day coming up here on April 14th Remember, folks, Universal didn't make Burt Gummer Day. Baby Fark McGee's acts did. You can follow them on Twitter, at Baby Fark Imger, or follow them, or, I don't know how you follow people on Imger. I don't, it's uh, something about tags or something. But if you know how to do it, go do it, because uh, it's fucking awesome. He's making a bunch of gifts of Tremors the TV show. That's where I'm so fucking excited, because uh, he didn't even know about it until I told him last Burt Gummer day and was like oh no man you gotta like check this out and shit and he was like how the fuck am I the biggest Burt Gummer fan and I missed out on this so he's making all of these gifts of the TV show to fucking drop on Burt Gummer day I'm so excited 
because it's going to get everybody. It's going to get everybody talking about it. That's really my biggest thing. Get people actually looking at the TV show and talking about it because they don't fucking know it exists. It's the weirdest goddamn thing. Uh, thank you to Steve, Michelle, and Bob Wilson, the cutest little Wilson family from Home Home Improvement. Looking, peeking over with their hats. You know, I make that joke, but they really, they love their hats like that. And they totally remind me of, of the Wilsons. And uh, make sure you buy Steve's book, uh, Tucker's Monster or Frady Cats. I got to pick up Frady Cats, actually. Kevin Collins bought me this Tucker's Monster. I got through, like, the first 20, 15 pages. This is really good. It's just so cool to hear, basically, just Steve being Steve inside of a book. And I want it to be a TV show, too. That's where I'm at. Um, it would be very good. Like uh, it's the anthologiness of it and the way that it's written and stuff is like this would I okay I, w- I want this, but so if and Steve has said if a million people buy a copy of Tucker's Monster, guess what? Maybe Hollywood will have to take notice and maybe do it. And that's not that impression Jeff can attest. It's really I I do love him when I do that. I he's the Mister Rogers of cinema guys. Uh, <laughs> and then thank you to Glenn and Brent Maddock. I love you guys. I love you, Glenn. He's always listening to these. He does most of our behind-the-scenes stuff. Uh, thank you to Nancy Roberts and Ron Underwood. Uh, they're actually working on a TV show. I was talking with Glenn, like Stampede. Like, they're doing whatever with the Tremors and stuff. But they're also working on something that they can actually do right now. And they're working on some kind of script. Glenn couldn't, like, tell me. But he was like, if I had one wish, I would wish to get my brother's new script produced so like we there's something stampede coming man like the tremors thing is a little while i think that's like a three four five year long process or whatever but like ooh, ooh, i I want my stampede entertainment um thank you to jonathan melville get your asses out there and buy seeking perfection the tremors guide it's awesome i don't know if you've read this even a little bit Dense. If you like filmmaking in any kind of sense, not even Tremors. This isn't even like a cool Tremors book, which it is. If you like filmmaking or TV, anything, you got to fucking read this. You got to read it to find out how to do it and do it well. Learn the mistakes that they all made. Um, Here's some podcast I need all of y'all to listen to. Obviously, Sons of Shadows podcast, Rotten Treasures podcast, Measuring the Score podcast, Everything I Learned from Movies podcast, The Run for Your Lives podcast, um, Confused Breakfast podcast. Ah, shit. There was one more. I should have wrote it down. I thought I had it. Son of a bitch. <laughs> oh, you're right. I had almost all of them. <laughs> um, Lojack on Discord. Uh, is running a Tremors 2 Call of Duty mod. He does that like every week. Uh, there's always a t- and there's a tournament every month where he actually gives out prizes and shit. Uh, I've never played it. I don't have video games outside of the Xbox I just used to play the DVD that I'm using. And that was an original Xbox, folks. Not an Xbox One or an Xbox X. So, uh, yeah. Old school. <laughs> uh, but yeah, go check out the Discord. Um, there's a guy I really like. He's doing a cosplay of Burt Gummer. Nate Crabtree, you're a dope dude. Octavio San Juan, thank you for writing the new Spanish version of the Tremors Guide. Uh, Gladys Jimenez, I can't wait for her to be on. Thank you for listening and following. Uh, there's a couple of great Twitter people. I'm just going to go through their names really quick because I always just have to like, okay, that person, that person. Uh, Bob Rushy, Alicia Pearson, Ashy Slashy, Metal Rican, Timothy Martin, Helena Sornum, uh, Jeff Magalachetti, uh, Cherry Droodles, shit, I really need to, like, check these more as they come in, because there's always so fucking many, um, everybody, if you're on Twitter in any kind of sense, the Tremor Saga people, they love you, they love you, like I said, retweeting saves lives, smash that fucking button, uh, it goes a long way, um, and then Rattle Cat, Rattle Sire, one of the people that actually helped set up this podcast and get it all done and stuff, uh, Joshua Pruitt, who's, we're writing, there's an animated tremor series that we're writing, but don't tell anybody. It's silent. He's actually, he uh, is a writer for Phineas and Ferb, actually. We've been talking behind the scenes. I'm excited. Uh, my biggest one, Zorn motherfucking Gavojic! 
Go watch the dead meat kill counts, people. You th if you think that I talk about tremors a whole fucking bunch, <laughs> those are awesome. Those are amazing. Love those. Even I like, like there will be one thing in each one that even I come out learning. Yeah. Where I'm just like, damn man, like, and I'm I'm feeding him. I've actually been talking to him behind the scenes too, and it's like I will feed him information, and then he'll just like, damn man, where the fuck did you pick that one from? Damn, damn, research, folks. Do it. Take your notes. It's important. Write things down or you'll forget them. But yeah, Zoran Gravojic, uh, fucking fantastic. Please go check them out. Um, and then I always love, thank you to my dad, Pappy, Danny Burzloff. Thank you to my mom, Desiree Hurtis. Thank you to my sister, Lacey, and my nephews, Sean Day, Sean Trell, Samaje, and Chamar. I do this for my family. Actually, the reason I do this podcast and you'll like this, is for what happened at the end of Tremors 7, my nephews absolutely love Tremors. Like, they they fucking are addicted to it. And I do not have the heart in me to play that movie. And I, I will not show them that movie until things get fixed or until there's an eighth one or a new TV show and we <laughs> do something different with that ending Cause it's like, man, I don't, I don't need them to be sad and then turn to me and be like, oh, what could you do about this? Oh, I didn't do anything. I did everything, guys. I did fucking everything I could to bring Burt Gummer back from the the from whatever. Uh, from wherever. <laughs> he went to a farm. I I brought him back from that farm down the down the street, and uh, but it's for that I really do because I would just love to. I would love for them never to have to experience that because it's fucking dumb. Um, and then lastly, thank you to my wife, Caitlin Marie Lutberzloff. She's downstairs sleeping right now, probably like not even sleeping because I've been so loud and laughing her ass off. So, yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Thank uh, Yeah, this has been cool. Um, yeah, it's always interesting to talk to new people about Tremors, so... Oh, yeah. yeah. Thank you for being a part of it. Uh, unless you have anything final to say, I always like to give the guest the last word. No, thank you everybody for listening in and make sure you keep on checking out Talking Tremors.